Hello Steelers, and welcome to this tutorial for painting 15mm Battlefront Soviets. I got these for my O group games, but they're designed for Flames of War, and painting them like this will work for both games really. I've completed a full battalion of supports for O group, and this is how I did it. I'll put links for all the paints I used in the description below. Once I've clipped the figures off the sprue and cleaned up the excess plastic with a sharp knife, I then glue them to their base. For this, I'm using Flames of War small size basins. This is for my sections in O Group, and I mount three figures on each. I use super glue to hold the figure to the base, and then build up the base around the figure using polyfiller. This is also known as spackle in the US. I use a flat headed screwdriver for this, and I try to make it as neat as possible. Now, some people like to prime their figures, and if you do, this is the time to do it. However, I find that priming figures using their base uniform colour is good enough and it also saves some time. I've never noticed a difference if a figure has been primed in black, grey, white, brown or any other colour to be honest, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Here I'm using Vallejo's English uniform, and I do two passes to make sure that I haven't missed any spots the first time around. Then once the primer has dried, it's time to begin on some of the details. I begin with the flesh, mostly because the face is underneath the helmet, and it's easier to paint these sunken parts now whilst the other raised areas such as the helmets are not painted. I'm using Sunny Skin Tone by Vallejo, and I use a small brush and try to be as neat as possible. Don't worry though, you can always clean up with the uniform colour later on anyway. All the helmets and the painted equipment is painted next, and for this I use Russian Green, this is again by Vallejo. This is a very quick step as they don't have that much painted equipment. But then, using Beige Brown by Vallejo, I paint the stocks of the rifles. This is a nice oiled wood colour, and it works well for wood. I also paint any leather equipment that they have, such as the ammo pouches and waist belts. Beige Brown works well for leather once you've washed it later in the process. The boots are painted black next. The Soviets wore a high boot, so make sure you get the full length with the paint. It goes all the way up to the knee. Doing this now means you won't have to get the black on the brown we'll be using for the base later. Also, I hate painting boots, so I get this out of the way when I can. Then the biggest part of paint is the canvas equipment. This is things like the bread bags, the backpacks, rifle straps, and other bits and pieces. For this, I use Vallejo's German Camouflage Base World War II, which works well for faded canvas, and it's also a nice contrast to the brown of the uniform. Using a small brush, I make sure I paint this as neat as I can, as these parts are usually the highest point on the figures. Again, though don't worry if you make a mistake, you can always go back with your previous colours and just remove any overspill or any thick lines. Just make sure you're getting some paint on the figures. Some of the figures have an overcoat thrown over their shoulders, and I paint this in US Field Drab. Again, just to have a nice contrasting colour to the canvas equipment and uniform. Once again, Try to be as neat as you can here, so you don't have to go back and repair any spillage. The rifles are completed with a dot of gunmetal grey on both the bolts and the barrels. The final part of the block painting section is to paint the bases, and for this I use Vallejo Flat Earth. I paint around the feet of the figures with a small brush, just to ensure that it's neat, and then I slap it on with a bigger brush on the rest of the base. Once they are completely dry, I use Agrax Earthshade by Citadel to wash the figures with. This is a great wash and it gets into all the nooks and crannies. Make sure to draw off any areas that pull with your brush so there's nice coverage across the figures. And then leave them to dry. Highlighting is easily done with the base colours that I painted the figures originally in. So flesh, painted equipment, uniforms, canvas and the overcoats. I don't bother with the leather or the wood of the rifles as I like the look of them with the Agrax anyway. I simply get each paint and just hit the raised areas of each colour, just to add that extra clean highlight to them. You could even go further and add a third highlight here with a slightly lighter shade of the base colours, but I don't bother as you're not going to see this at table distance anyway. Once the highlighting is finished, I use Windsor & Newton spray varnish to seal the figures and protect them in games. Do this in a well ventilated area or wear a mask. The final stage is just to add some static grass to the bases of the figures, and to do this I paint undiluted PVA glue all over their bases, and then sprinkle the grass over this. Some people use an applicator, but I don't bother, as blowing on the grass before it dries helps it stand up anyway. And there you have it! The completed Soviet Battalion, 
It took me about three to four hours to complete each company and about three weeks to paint everything you can see here that I did in batches. You could do a lot more detailing than I have, but these are tabletop figures, so most of the detail is going to be lost anyway, so I don't really bother. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe, and also check out the Patreon and the channel memberships if you want to help out the channel and get early access to ad-free videos. Thank you very much for watching.